My name is Byron. I'm one of the research team at VAS Research. I want to take you through the testing procedures to ensure that you get the best out of the system. I suggest that you have a copy of the script by your side for the first few tests. You'll see on each page a, a button um, marked Instructions. That also will show you how to test. But you'll find that testing is quite easy. You won't need the script at all after two or three trials. If the child is distracted or unwell or just plain tired, or for any reason, there is a comments box for you to add your observations on that day. Before you start any test, ensure that the student understands what is expected of them. Letters and words and numbers will appear on the screen. You don't need to pay attention to those. The student reads them aloud and you accurately type in what the student said, right or wrong. You copy in what the student said. One of the tests is called sounding. It displays single letters. And we've invented a kind of shorthand to show the difference between letter names and letter sounds. Put simply, we type letter sounds in lowercase and letter names in capitals. For example, let's say a letter Y appeared on the screen. You ask the child for the sound, he says that's Y. That's, he's given us the correct sound, so you type in a lowercase Y. Here's a U. If the child says uh, that's a U, and you say yes, what is the sound of a U? And he says, y. You would type in Y for Y. If the program showed a letter E, and the child said that's E, you would type in a lowercase E here. However, if they said that's an E, and you said, what is the sound of that? And they said E, you would type in a capital E. If you wish, you can use this kind of shorthand throughout the whole test. But when you get into words, the program is sophisticated enough to know what you meant, even if you mistype it. Here's another example. Let's say the word that appears on the screen is set, S-E-T. If the child reads this as set, you type in exactly what the child said, S-E-T, set. However, if the child says the word is seat, you would type in S with a capital E, S-E-T, seat. If you typed in S-E-A-T, the program would also understand that in, in uh, words. Let's look at another example. Let's say the, wo the word is set and the child said the word is sit. You only type in what the child said, so you type in S-I-T, sit. Here's another word, ran. If the child has confusion between names and sounds on that letter A in the middle, he might say the word is rain, in which case you would type it R with a capital A and a small n, r-a-n. Here's another one example. The child might say the word is goat. G, capital O, T. If you typed in actually G, O, A, T, the program is also sophisticated enough to know what was said. Some children have inaccurate speech. You may not be sure what exactly they said. All you do is use a question mark for that particular sound. That's all you need to master. The automatic program does everything else for you. You will find from time to time, however, that your, a child will try to deliberately try to appear worse than they really are. You go to the pointing test and read the instructions. If the student's choices are bizarre, for example, they might think a B looks like an X, you should suspect they are malingering. Just stop the computer, stop the test, say you can't fool the computer, and then test them on another day. 
We suggest that you watch the video that shows a child being tested. You can see that testing, in fact, should be fun. The words automatically change to equivalent words, so the words you use now will be different in about three months' time. So there's no point in trying to teach the test. This is a major breakthrough.